Hello, fellow Week 18ers. It's us, the Fantasy Footballers. We are still here on today's show. We have our Never Not Working segment. We're talking about some dynasty players, some contracts you need to pay attention to. Of course, we break down those matchups and the ultimate collusion to the Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. You do not want to miss a moment. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we're not going away in the offseason. Like this video and leave some comments. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. We are still here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> Thursday, January 5th, 2023, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome in. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, the Borgogan himself, Deucer's Alley. Completely full today. Of deuce. Errs. <laughs> Keep but on deucing. The, the group is here. We're together. And uh, we've got an episode of our podcast for you. That is correct. And, today, and it will be great. Today we will. Yeah, it will. I mean, obviously. But it is week 18. So we will be covering those games towards the back half of the show. Got some starts of the week for you. Um, we've got Never Not Working on the show today. We've got news, some good news updates to share with you. And, uh, yeah, this is the final Never Not Working segment of the year. A couple things at the top. If you are in need of a trophy, ring, belt, anything for your fantasy league. Oh, I am. Tell me more. Uh, fantasychamps.com. Mm -hmm. Going. The code is Jason Sucks. <laughs> nice try. Not falling for that again. Uh, the code is free ring. Fool me once. The, <laughs> the code is actually free ring, and uh, you will receive a free $59 championship ring with the purchase of a trophy or belt if you use that code. Fantasychamps.com for your league swag. Okay? So you just put the trophy or belt in your cart, put a $59 ring in the cart, put the code in, free ring. And uh, the rest is history. And uh, we do have a Foot Clan title t-shirt. We do it every year. If you want to celebrate your championship, go to shopballers.com. You can grab the 2022 Foot Clan title t-shirt. Or I guess we not just t-shirt. We have a mug. We got a, a hoodie for for the hoodie people. The hoodie world is Love a world. a good hoodie. I, I like the hoodie. Oh, man. I like the hoodie world when it's on. Like I would, if I could, right. I don't like the like pullover hoodie. I like a zip up hoodie. I just feel like it's a complicated world. You the, want the, the versatility. World. Yeah, I just don't want to go over, like, pull it over my head. I get on it. On and it, off. It, it messes, feels like, messes the hair up. And when you take it off, maybe you accidentally pick up your shirt and you just show your belly off. Mm. That's true. Or or Been a booty there. crack. Oh, a booty crack? Oh, really? Yeah. Because of a hoodie? Well, maybe your booty crack. If it pulls your shirt up. Okay. Then you have potential that you're showing off Mike, your, the Mike top is, of the I've still, got, He I've sags got, quite a bit. I was going to say, I got badonkadonk, but I'm usually... Full covered on the. You put uh, on the old pants. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm usually wearing pants. Call me crazy. It's called plumber's crack, guys. It just it happens when the shirt comes up and the pants go down just a little bit. Okay. You get a little sneak peek. Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> Check this out. Check this sneak out. Peek. Well, good. The show's off to a great start. Mike is going to share our final never not working segment with us. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, we jumped into a uh, quite the dynasty conversation yesterday. That's because fun. tis the season where you start thinking about those things. And as your leagues are wrapping up, or, you know, free agency has just reopened for some for, uh, for your dynasty leagues. You got to pay attention to contracts. You got to pay attention to mm -hmm. who is a free agent because here is where you find yourself some cheap players that you can stash on your bench and just see what happens. And like wild things happen on uh, when you're doing this. I remember a few years ago, I brought up the name uh, Rex Burkhead, who was coming off of uh, I think it was his Week 18 performance, and it was just it was a huge game. And it was like, really? We're going to talk about this backup like guy who's done really nothing for the Cincinnati Bengals. And it was like, yeah, just 
have a look just in case. And boom, picked up by the Patriots. Now Mike Gillisley factored in, but Rex Burkhead had very useful games for the New England Patriots. And he was just sitting on waiver wires, a guy that you could pick up. And so we just want to highlight some uh, some contracts here that you pay attention to. Uh, you know, like we have some quarterbacks. Could be This could be a huge influx season for these quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, still not extended by the Baltimore Ravens. You would expect that he would be back. He'll be franchised. He's not really a free agent. That is 100% yes, true. he will be franchised. Yeah. But I mean, the, the more that this goes of the Baltimore Ravens aren't going to give – if they don't give him the contract that he wants, I mean, just say, like, some weird stuff could shake out for Baltimore with him. Where does Tom Brady go? Does he end mm -hmm. up, like the rumors are talking about, that he ends up with the Las Vegas Raiders? San Francisco. You know, Daniel Jones and Geno Smith. Some of, some of these guys, it's an interesting situation to pay attention to. But to me, the meat and the potatoes of this section is, a, is the running backs. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard. And to me, when I think about these names, it's not more so, what do I do with these guys? So what do I do with the players who are currently sitting behind these big-time running backs? Like David Montgomery for the Chicago Bears. He's in a contract year. Do the Chicago Bears bring him back? They have Khalil Herbert, who's looking like he can be the guy, the one-two down grinder. He's got a three-down skill set. But who's behind him? You have Ebner, the rookie. He didn't get a lot of play this year, but he's under contract. And he could become their de facto primary backup. Take a look at uh, the situation in Jacksonville, a move I made recently. You have Travis Etienne. He's locked in. He's the guy. Who's the backup? Who's hasty, the hasty. Hasty's on, not under contract next year. But you know who is? Snoop Connor. And I just grabbed Snoop Connor off of the waiver there wire. There it is. Because, <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Uh, because who knows? Are they going to bring back Hasty? Or, like, there was a lot of buzz in the in the Dynasty community about Snoop Connor coming into the draft season, but we all kind of moved on because he got buried on a depth chart, but he may be on the rise. Look at players like Alexander Madison. Uh, he may be earning himself a – I don't know, you know how you feel about Madison, but he is a capable running back, and he has a chance to go out there and find himself a contract, which means Minnesota, they will need themselves another backup running back and I'm trying to pull up his name. Ma Madison seems like the player that could go, and the role for him might be the way Mostert and Jeff Wilson complimented sure. as lead runners in Miami. Madison might be able to go someplace, and as opposed to being a full backup, he could be a complimentary one-two punch with somebody. But there was a name throw out, a uh, friend of the show, Paul Charchian, who's uh, he's a locked-in fantasy guy, but he's a Minnesota guy. And he threw out a tweet a couple days ago that said, you should throw Ty Chandler on the back of your dynasty bench just in case. Just in case. So there are names out there to monitor. So it and I don't we, we don't want to run through all of them, but it's getting you in the habit of the process of, you know, starting about the middle of the year, especially now, go to some of these uh these websites that track the contracts. Find who the free agents are and start stashing their backup running backs. Start finding some of these wide receivers who may be worth an addition. DeAndre Hopkins of the, of the Arizona Cardinals. We got a tweet yesterday from uh, Johnny Venerable, who's a, he's a plugged-in Arizona guy, who said, it's possible that Christmas Day was the last game as an Arizona Cardinal for DeAndre Hopkins. Like Hollywood right? Brown, Rondell Moore. The Dorch. The Dorch. The Dorch. Like, yeah. the Dorch I, don't, I don't know what his roster percentage is in a dynasty league, but like he was on and off of the waiver wire throughout a, a lot of dynasty leagues and he might be back on there he's just or the, it's a, a trade target because you sure. look at the situation and you say who can i pick up on the cheap this year uh pay attention to teams that have a lot of cap space to spend sometimes that's worth noting specifically Absolutely. for whether um a value on that team could get replaced or get mm -hmm. upgraded against like the falcons um you know and the number one team is the bears the falcons giants patriots have the most to spend beyond that but you know, if you're looking at the Giants, right, and you're looking at Isaiah Hodgins, and they have all this money to spend, and they have a need at wide receiver, he is not the player that you look at and say, oh, I'm going to go try to get as many shares of him because maybe he's up and coming. No, the more likely thing is that he is a player that will be uh, supplanted by a more high-profile talent on that roster. So 
if you can move him in a deal. That's kind of the type of salary-based decisions you might make. Yeah, and, and uh, I would add that you can also trade away some of these guys that are about to be free agents before people realize they're free agents yeah. because What's they, in might, the box? They, they might not – you know, Miles Sanders, Devin Singletary. These are two players that, you know, they're on good teams going through a playoff run. They could do some really nice things in the playoffs, look great. Like, oh, man, Singletary's, you know, on fire, and, and then the offseason comes and, and, and you trade him. Maybe they don't re-sign him. Devin Singletary is not the type of player that's going to go get a, 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 you know, a giant workload job some no. other team, um, and and they're going to draft Bajon, you know, anyway. So it's like, um, <laughs> actually, I heard uh, I heard Eagles this morning. Hey, that's great. Just buy 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 Miles Sanders, bring Bajon into the Eagles. Oh man, I would love this good offensive line. And then pay, also paying attention of certain offenses, how do they function? Do they? rely on the tight end position like the Dallas Cowboys the the the, the reason why I had my infatuation with Blake Jarwin back in the day was they use the tight end position a lot and uh, they're gonna have an opening here and he seems like he's the next guy up now he got hurt Dalton Schultz came in and took his milk money but the process was correct of whoever the next tight end is for the Dallas Cowboys I'm interested and the way that this, the season started for Dalton Schultz, the contract negotiations stalled. He's on the franchise tag right now, Kyle. Is that correct? Correct. So take a look. Take a look at who – maybe he doesn't re-sign. And I brought this up, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, but Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, those would be the next two guys in line. They could re be replaced in the draft, but right now you're just you're, – you're trying to get some scratchers and see if, if any of these guys can pay off, get a – move themselves into a bigger time role on the team next year. Is the uh, the quarterback that put up 38 fantasy points against the 49ers last week <laughs> one of those one of those players? You're talking Stidham? Yeah. I mean, it's he's worth he should be on a bench just in case he ends up being the starter cuz the 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 wink wink reason that he's playing is cuz the Raiders want to evaluate the talent. They want to see what they have at the position. Crazier things have happened. Doesn't he seem just one more good game and he could be the starter for the for the uh Washington football team next year? <laughs> At, yes, absolutely. If he goes out, honestly, if he goes out and he puts up numbers, he may end up as a stopgap starter somewhere. Like it's it's it is legitimately true. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Yeah, I, I picked up Jarrett Stidham in Dynasty. That was why I asked the question. Mm. But I have a team with no backup quarterback, so I was like, I mean, it was a drop of Trace McSorley to pick up Jarrett Stidham. I mean, you, they're, everyone's Dynasty bench out there, because you have 30-whatever players, you have five to seven spots at least that can just churn at any moment, and you should be very, very proactive right now. You know what is so funny about Dynasty benches? Because you're right, you have – three four five players that you you can cut and and I you know when I look at my dynasty rosters I, I always see them like oh the, you know these guys are worthless and then when the moment comes to actually do the drop <laughs> man I'm like oh I can see the path sure <laughs> like every single time I can't ever drop anybody Raheem Mostert was one of those guys last year that oh you, you could not have traded him to dynasty anybody he was gone it was it was zero like I, I I probably had moments where I thought about cutting him for somebody else Kept him on my bench and was like a crucial part of my team all year. You know, stranger things happen really, really quickly. All right, news and notes. This is a big one. Just broke this morning. I'm going to read to you from the uh, official Buffalo Bills Twitter handle. Update on DeMar Hamlin. Per the physicians caring for DeMar Hamlin at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, DeMar has shown remarkable improvement over the past 24 hours. While still critically ill, he has demonstrated that he appears to be neurologically intact. His lungs continue to heal, and he is making steady progress. We are grateful for the love and support we have received. And um, Ian Rappaport expanded and said he opened his eyes last night, is responsive, and, uh, you know, their family is endlessly appreciative of the medical care given to Hamlin on the field immediately and over the last 72 hours. Yeah. It's great news. It is the news that we have just been wanting and hoping, and you know, if it can, can, we hope it continues trending in that direction. The 
that is such good news to hear that he's neurologically intact because that's you know the 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 biggest uh, I think the number one fear uh, sure. going forward and and now um, that's just so nice to have positive direction that this is heading. The Commanders will start rookie quarterback Sam Howell on Sunday against Dallas, fifth round rookie out of How do you feel, UNC. Jason? Oh baby. <laughs> Look, I always have my third string backup <laughs> worthless quarterback that I love. Now it's Sam Howell. Um, he is very mobile, can run the ball, will be good for fantasy, and is clearly going to be the next great Kyle Trask. Um, <laughs> so watch out, world. The Bears will start Nathan Peterman. Justin Fields' season comes to an end. Yeah. He's out with a hip injury. 64 yards shy of Lamar Jackson's single-season quarterback rushing record, which, again, he'll, he'll get it next year. Yeah, he'll get a next year with an extra game. No, well, think about the way that the season started. Justin Fields wasn't running. That's fair. I mean, if I, if but he, also not fair. Yeah, and I mean, the you know, we'll see if his he, body he, can hold up. I will say that. Yeah, he he has been beaten up. Yes, and eventually they're like, okay, we're we're, we're going to stop this. Yeah, I mean, I part of it's going to be whether or not they're a good team, whether they're winning games, because I I don't believe that this is a situation where he couldn't necessarily play through some of these injuries there's no reason to put Justin Fields out and worry about his health for the future when he showed he showed you like he is yeah. their future yes uh speaking of Kyle Trask Jason uh Todd Bowles did say he has a good chance of dressing for week 18 oh man this so, is gonna be great also I mean if Tom Brady leaves it won't be Kyle they Trask. will be replacing <laughs> him with some I other was trying to give you some hope creative. yeah thank you Nathan thank Peterman you. will come in there and uh, uh, oh gosh all right David Blau is going to start for the ah, card for the Cardinals blah, blah, blah. Oh. DeAndre Hopkins been ruled out oh no Christian McCaffrey didn't practice on Wednesday hey. is dealing with a little bit of a sprained ankle game is important to the 49ers but uh that doesn't mean like I thought about doesn't mean they can't beat the Cardinals without him. Well, it's just the Jordan Mason question. Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at Jordan Mason this week, it, it wasn't to the degree that I was willing to put him in as a start of the week. Sure. But it was certainly one of those things where in DFS, um, if you're dealing with a team that has, like, a bunch of players that are not going to play, like Jordan Mason could be a flex-worthy guy this he, week. He's a must-start top-10 type of option. They designated should. the missile again. Oh, is Elijah? Well, he, Elijah Mitchell was designated to return. That doesn't mean that he will play on Sunday, but it we'll means, have clarity it means that by. He could. We'll have clarity by Sunday. Yeah. Both Elijah Mitchell, Jordan Mason need to be picked up for Week 18 rosters, put on your bench, and then should Chris, Christian McCaffrey be ruled out, we'll know who's active for that game. Yeah, whoever is active, Absolutely. will be awesome. And if it is Elijah, if Elijah Mitchell is active and Jordan Mason is active. I'm going to be right back in Elijah Mitchell. We've seen it time and time again because he's gotten injured so many times. When Elijah Mitchell comes back, they're just like, okay. He's well, very you're, good. You're cleared for takeoff yes. missile, and uh, we'll give you the ball 25 times. Uh, no more – no practice for Lamar Jackson. Man. And then we did have some schedule adjustments from yesterday's show. The Bengals-Ravens game will now be played at 1 p.m. Eastern. If the Bengals beat the Ravens at 1 Eastern, the Chargers will automatically clinch the 5 seed without playing. The Chargers, I think, at that point would sit down a bunch of their options. If they clinch the 5 seed, they know they're going on the road to play Tennessee or Jacksonville. Um, you've already seen the line move in that game. So Denver's now favored. Go Denver. Yeah. So oh, yeah. That's like a f almost a six-point move, I think. Because it was three and a half, uh, Denver plus three and a half. Now it's Denver minus two and a half. Come on, everybody, let's root for Denver and against the Cardinals. Well, you don't whoa, have to whoa, root against. Whoa, the I'm just rooting for Denver, man. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's purely you know. Yeah, that's if, right. If Denver, Denver's pick goes to Seattle, and so Denver has no like motivation to lose the game and get their pick to be except for spite. No, they have motivation to win the game. Yeah, that's for what spite. I mean. But I'm saying no motivation to lose the game, so it's good. Right, it's good for the Cardinals. Right, as Cardinals, and Wait, not only what? that, it's in it's an in division pick. We need that number three pick. <laughs> we have very little to live for <laughs> as Cardinal fans. It's always fun to see the transition of goals. Yeah, mm -hmm. for fans. Yeah, play from playoffs to full teardown. <laughs> yeah, to, to the nubs, to the nubs, Cardinals. Um, <laughs> uh, last final big announcement. Now that the fantasy season is, you know, over, week 17 is in the books, and there's the question with the Cincinnati Bengals-Buffalo Bills game, people want an update for the Megalobowl. 
The Megala Bowl, here is what we are doing in this massive league. League is the, <laughs> the word. I heard that something. Um, the, the, we are waiting for official announcement on what they are doing with that game. If that game resumes, those points from that game will go to the final scores, and we do not know who wins yet. Should that game get canceled, then we have our winner. The team name is Lamb and Goat, and the user is Reverby. I'm going to okay. say it that way okay? because I nailed it. Um, with 203 fantasy points, had the Brady Evans stack. Oh, yes. And that would be a spot in next year's Listener League. That it was. As the winner of the Megala Bowl. So, a, a temporary congratulations. Yeah, it does seem to me like the trend is towards not – playing the game not resuming that game um you know it, it's too complicated to say what's fair what's not fair i mean it's like there's just a lot involved and you have a process you have winning percentages you have tiebreakers you have those things to be determined and this weekend will take place and we'll see where we're at things changing every day of course and um we're not going anywhere all right we are into the fantasy forecast for week 18 Fantasy Forecast. All right, gentlemen. It's time to blitz these Week 18 games. On Saturday, the Chiefs are 13-3. and They're taking on the 6-10 and Raiders. The DK Sportsbook line, Kansas City, minus 9.5. The over-under is 52.5. Kansas City needs to win to lock up the number one seed. They're motivated. They're playing the Raiders. So you could have a situation where if the game got out of hand, you know, they could put their, put their guys on the old bench. But uh, right now, not the expectation. No, it's not the expectation. The Raiders are very motivated as well, not because of playoff seating, but this is a divisional matchup where they've got, you know, the the new quarterback, Jared Stidham, coming in to um, a, attempt to have a job, have a career, have a future. You have a head coach that really needs some positivity and a win. Um, playing spoiler here to the Kansas City Chiefs, getting the number one overall seed would be massively important within that division. So I, I like the options in this game quite a bit for fantasy. Uh, I'm There's nobody I am afraid to start of the big names you're used to starting. The real question mark to me comes just like, are you playing with a wide receiver? Are you playing with a wide receiver for Kansas City? Like they're, they're, they're only going to throw for about 700 yards. Can you play a wide receiver in fantasy? I don't have any confidence to do so. That's insane because it's 100% where I'm at. Like, how do you – confidently throw Juju in. We, we had the like mini breakout of Kadarius Tony this last week. You can't throw Kadarius Tony in. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling should have had a monster game. Didn't. Won't. So it's like <laughs> you just check out. Not sure how much work Josh Jacobs will get in this game. He is a, a high risk play. Very high risk. Uh, Darren Waller, on the other hand, I think he will get his opportunities coming back. One final game. Had a rapport with Jarrett Stidham. Devontae Adams, um, I imagine you're going to start him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jacobs is the only one. He didn't practice on Wednesday, and, and, and I saw some quotes around, you know, um, what was it? It was something to the extent of, you know, you're never going to be surprised if when Josh Jacobs can get out there and, you know, go to work. So Josh Jacobs, I mean, just for personal motivation stuff, he's sitting at 1,608 rushing yards in first Second would be Nicholas Chubb at fourteen forty eight. Derrick Henry is at fourteen twenty nine. So, unless Derrick Henry has one of his two hundred yard games, Jacobs seems pretty safe for the rushing title. Titans are seven and nine. They take on the eight and eight Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a, a pretty exciting game. The this DK, is the good one. DK Sportsbook line: Jacksonville minus six. Over under is forty. All players on both sides that are active in this game are going to be. Great options for fantasy if you were relying on them previously. So Trevor Lawrence, Derrick Henry, Travis Etienne, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, and then you can look. You can glance at Traylon Burks this week with the amount of missing players out there, and you can you can take a little you know a little bit of side eye towards Chig Aconquo. Sure, you, we you do need to keep an eye on Traylon Burks just to make sure that his status is okay. He wasn't on the injury report yesterday, but then uh, there's just some kind of incomplete information of maybe he got uh maybe he tweaked his groin during the uh 
practice. <laughs> during during the practice. <laughs> Uh, you but looked just, like you were so obligated. To do, like it, it was involuntary. It's, it's like breathing. Trying to make a normal sentence out of it. Uh, so, so just pay attention to his practice status. The one thing I would say, Travis Etienne to me is, uh, uh, look, he's he's great. He's going to get the work. His he's opportunity just, is there. You, you have to play him. I don't think you have to play oh, him. You, I think you have to. I, I think he's questionable. I mean, we saw him against uh, – Tennessee is – you know, obviously they're playing for the life here, but they're coming off a of bye week. Essentially, they rested all their important players last week on both sides of the ball. Last time Travis Etienne played the Tennessee Titans, he had 17 carries, scored three fantasy points. I'm not saying you must bench Travis Etienne. I'm saying if if you pick up, uh, you know, uh, Elijah Mitchell off waivers, and you're sitting there, and he's active, and Christian McCaffrey is out and you can make that switch at the end of the week, I would rather play him because I do have some fears. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to throw the ball all over against uh, the Tennessee Titans and their running game. Uh, I think that's a pretty hot take. It is. Uh, week I mean, 18 spice. But I Travis it. Etienne running back five and a half last week. Really good performance against the Jets run defense. Um, he's in there for me. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there if there is. You a, would start if you it off the injured reserve Elijah Mitchell. If he is active and Christian McCaffrey is out, absolutely. What if he's not active, but it's Jordan Mason? It's not going to just be him. I mean, like if Jordan it, Mason would be involved too. If if he is not active and Christian McCaffrey is not active, I would start Jordan Mason as well. All right. Um. Wow. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break, get back into the Sunday games. Tampa Bay eight and eight taking on the six and ten Atlanta Falcons. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Atlanta minus four over under is forty and a half. That tells you all you need to know. Mm -hmm. You need to do your best to sit down your Buccaneers. They have nothing to play for. Todd Bowles is a liar. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know maybe it's a quarter. Maybe it's a nothing. I mean, there's a chance you go out there and Tom Brady is not active. There is a chance that they play the whole game. And they have great fantasy output. And it's not a risk worth taking to me at all. I agree with you. The, these guys, I'm looking for other options if I can because the the Vegas line is usually the right line to uh, you know go after. Chase chase that information, not coach speak. Uh, on the other side of the ball, though, if if they do sit some players down, they're going to sit sit some defensive players down as well. Tyler Algier will get every opportunity in this game. Yeah, he's in. He's a great play. Last three games, a top 12 running back. Um, Desmond Ritter is not an option. Drake London, you could you could give him a go. In full PPR, yeah. I mean, it was since Desmond Ritter came in, even though Dev Desmond Ritter is not very good and not throwing a ton of yards, he is – can't throw yards, bro. Uh, not, uh, you know, accumulating a bunch of yards – the targets have just been all going to Drake London at the wide receiver position. He's a really good player. 11 targets, 9 targets, 8 targets, 12 targets his last four games. So Drake London in a full PPR, I think, is in. New England's 8-8, eight and eight, and they take on the 12-3 and three Buffalo Bills. The DK Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 7. The over-under is 42.5. Buffalo will already know the result of the Kansas City game. So uh, there's a situation here where they are, you know, not – at much of a risk. Now, they could still drop to the three seed. What is that playoff scenario, Kyle? Uh, it's dependent on the Bengals, and if they reschedule the game, mm -hmm. then they technically could. New England can clinch the wild card in this game with a win uh, against Buffalo, so they will be highly motivated. They're playing for their playoff lives. Buffalo beat them 24-10 in Week 13. Uh, what What is your approach to this game? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm as of now, I think you can only take the approach of looking at this as a as a normal matchup. This is, um, I think, both players, both teams are going to be motivated enough, given their situation and their circumstances, where you just say they're going at it. And um, I'm not valuing the risk high enough for the reward in in this specific type of a matchup when you've got this good of uh, fantasy options from the Bills side of the ball. Ramondre Stevenson, oh, e even with motivation in the last two weeks, <laughs> yeah. has been really brutal for your fantasy Are rosters. Are you motivated to play Ramondre? I feel like you're probably stuck, but this is not a good matchup. He's been bad. Mm -hmm. He now has Damian Harris back. So Ramondre, to me, is, is RB2, RB3 territory. Agreed. Uh, you know, Jacoby Myers, if he's active, is the only wide receiver I'd play for New England. 
Is that fair? Yeah, that is fair. I was going to say, like, Tyquan Thornton did get seven targets. If if Myers is out, would you look at Thornton? I'd be I'd be okay with it. Intrigued? Yeah. Seven, like I said, the seven targets, three for Did you play him over touchdown. ETN? No. 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 Get out I'm of just, here. I'm just playing. Uh, Jason would. Uh, <laughs> I would not. James Cook, Jason's Devin Singletary. Like, how do I get Keyshawn Vaughn? Well, you didn't lineup. say Keyshawn Vaughn. You said Tyquan Thornton. I know, but I'm just trying to think of all the nasty boys I can. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we moving on? Uh, what are your choices here? I, I, Gabe Davis? Uh, yeah, Gabe Davis is a you know a swing for the fences type of player that you can always put in your lineup, have a two-touchdown game. And I think Dawson Knox is fine as well. The Patriots haven't been shutting down tight ends this year, and he has been on a roll. So I'd be fine starting him as a low-end tight end one. Minnesota's 12-4. and four. They take on the 3-13 and 13. Chicago Bears. The DK Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus 7. The over-under is 43. The Bears will be starting Nathan Peterman. They've lost nine in a row. Um, the Bears, if they lose, and the Texans lose to the Colts, that can't be true. The mm -hmm. Bears get the number one pick. That must have been Texans need to win. No, if the Texans lose to the Colts, they will have three losses, and the win percentage would give the Bears the number one pick. Because they have a tie? Correct. Interesting. Okay. Wait a minute. That is not true. So there, there's one. You're telling me 213 and one is better than three and thir three. Sorry, and the, Texan, the Texans win. Sorry, the Texans win. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. What a dummy. Yeah. All right. That I was like, Kyle's that doesn't make any sense. He just um, meant there was a loss in the game that the Texans play in. But it was on the other side of the field. <laughs> there was a loss there in the matchup. There was a loss in that matchup. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Bears have a shot to still get the number one pick if the Texans were to win against the Colts, which is not impossible. That matchup no. um, is two teams trying hard to lose. Say that you have the – what you do have – I think the Texans the, might win that game. The Houston Texans, 213-1. The Colts, 411-1. Both teams should – or I should, it, the players don't want to lose. They never want to lose. But – the the management of the team certainly would be okay if their team lost this matchup. So that will be uh, – that's going to be an interesting watch. Do you, do you think some of these coaches that know they're on the way out – you know, maybe that's why Adam Gase went and won that last game was just to stick that's, it to them and be like, I don't want them winning with Trevor Lawrence when I'm gone. I'm, I'm going to make sure they get Zach Wilson win impossible. this last game. Lovey Smith go, goes out there and just dominates. There's no way that – that number two would have evaluated the quarterback talent in such a fashion, Jason. That's fair. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, you know, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, they got to win this game, but they could do it, you know, in a Jacksonville fashion from the, last week. Yeah, but they're I'm playing everybody. Yep, 100%. Dalvin Cook, who let a lot of people down uh, last week and last year in that same uh, week, this matchup is just so great for him. I, I – I have to have him in my life. So play your Vikings. What about Cole Komet without Justin Fields? If you've got Nathan Peterman at quarterback, I think Montgomery and Herbert can be played if you're desperate, you know, for a running back start. But Cole Komet, the target share has been there, but a new quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, it, on the on the plus side, you're going to have probably more opportunity for passing because Nathan Peterman's not going to be running for 100 yards in a quarter. But also, he's Nathan Peterman. He's not going to be throwing for touchdowns or a ton of passing yards. So I'm I'm pretty much out on Cole Komet. Where are you uh, on Alexander Madison with the potential that you have? This game wrapped up pretty quickly. Last week, I mean, not a ton of work, but 40% of the snaps. That's his highest snap share since week five. I don't... Nine opportunities was his highest opportunity share since week five. Yeah, what about him versus Herbert in the same game where you have the, the secondary option? Right. Like, Madison should have an opportunity to get extra work in this game, no question. Um, I don't mind him as a flex yeah. play, personally. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, as a flex, that, that's Obviously right. way ahead of ETN. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I mean, you have to bench ETN. That's what I was saying. Just no matter what, you got to, you know, punt him off the bridge. So would you go Herbert or Madison, Jason? In this game, I think I would go Herbert just because we've seen massive – uh plays from him and um you know it, personally I, I don't love starting either one of them i think i might go madison i think it's a very tough call between the, the run, two the rush defense of the bears is, oh, is garbage hot yeah. garbage so i guess touchdown opportunities probably more there for the viking side the matchup better so yeah I'll, I'll switch over and go madison but i'm not loving the play of either 
Ravens are 10-6. and six. They take on the 11-4 and four Bengals. The DK Sportsbook line, Cincinnati at home, minus 7, over-under is 42. If Cincinnati wins, these two teams would likely face each other in the playoffs. Cincinnati is the three seed. Baltimore is the six seed. And if Cincinnati wins this game, the Chargers will likely bench players in the afternoon. Baltimore did win in week five, but they had a, uh, a quarterback named Lamar Jackson at the time. Cincinnati was also uh, not the same team in week five of this season. You're starting all your Bengals, Jason. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am. I mean, Joe Mixon is in despite a difficult matchup just because of the opportunities. He had 25 in week 16. Joe Burrow is too good to ever bench right now. Jamar Chase, too good to ever bench ever. Uh, T. Higgins, too good to bench. So those those guys are in. I'm not rolling with uh, Boyd or P. Ryan or Hayden Hurst as ancillary options because the Baltimore Ravens defense is good. But the great guys, they, they have to be in. You did see, uh, I mean, we only got a little bit of the game, but Hayden Hurst was getting involved in the offense early for Cincinnati in his return, which was nice to see. This is uh, a team that could move to the number two seed if Buffalo does lose to New England, which is not an impossibility this week, New England trying to make the playoffs. So uh, there's some stuff on the line there for Cincinnati. Baltimore, you know, they – they're resting up for the playoffs, really. Uh, you got J.K. Dobbins' fast right leg. Yeah, do you, what, what do you do with super leg? Um, sure. <laughs> sure, RB2, I mean, RB3. The, yeah, I, I can agree with that. The The one thing to watch would be Gus Edwards, uh, the Gus bus, got essentially no work. He got three carries this past week, uh, and Harbaugh came out and, and one of, you know, it's the classic, uh, the coach of, I have no idea how the player on my team didn't play, but they should have played more. Uh, so he went to that line. So I, I think that Gus will be back eating into the split a little bit. But it makes <laughs> oh, oh beep beep. I love I that. I forgot drop. about that drop. The Gus bus. Um, it, it does make sense though. You know, with you know, he's more of a CEO type of. Uh, you know, he's above everything. The offense coordinator is going to run the show there and put those packages together. If he comes out and says that's absolutely unacceptable. You know you will see more Gus Bus in this game. The matchup is not great. So Dobbins is okay. He's an okay play, but, uh, you know, you could see a dud because he's not catching passes. If he doesn't break off a long one or get a touchdown, it's easy for him to have a, a lower floor than what we are hoping. If you stuck with Mark Andrews last week, you were rewarded 9 for 100 on 9 targets. You stay with him this week. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think Isaiah likely could be involved as well. The, the running or the wide receiver room is just, I mean, you're down to Deshaun Jackson, Sammy Watkins, uh, Demarcus Robinson. Oof-da. Depletion is the word. Houston's 213 and one. They take on Indianapolis at 411 and one. Kyle would ha have you believe that if they manage to lose this game, they can, <laughs> <laughs> they can lose their number one pick. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Indianapolis minus two and a half over under 38. Um, watching this game would be one of the possible punishments you could give to your children if they were disobedient this week, if they did something wrong. You could have you could sit them down and make them watch this game in lieu of maybe doing some chores mm -hmm. or any other type of punishment. Or, you know, people ask, last place finisher in my league, maybe you're a week 17 <laughs> league, say, well, what's the punishment? Well, you got to watch this game. Um, I, ironically, this game... That's a pretty good punishment if you tell them they have to dress up as one of the teams and root for them. Yeah. You have to root for one of these teams <laughs> to win. Can't miss a snap. Cannot miss a snap. Um, I do think this game will end up possibly being entertaining. It's not going to be the process throughout three and a half quarters. Probably not there. But, you know, a two and a half point line says it could be a competitive game. I think you've got uh, the Colts maybe wanting to lose and the Texans may be wanting to win because we we do see that it's so dumb and they shouldn't but uh if Lovey Smith goes out there and wants to uh leave his mark it's, it, it could end up being a close competitive game at the very least even if for fantasy purposes not great one, oh, one of the things there's some juice in here one of the things that happens you know you think about Houston and their actual situation <laughs> sorry Jason Jason just saw my running back start of the week Gross. Oh yeah. Oh vomit. My my the starts, Rolling Stone. My starts of the week are all quite nasty. <laughs> nasty. Look, Houston. The the players, the individual players in the coaching staff, wants to win this football game. You know, they're fighting for their jobs. You know, um, this is a team that's going to draft a quarterback, and it's going to be a refresh. So, um, Zach Moss is going to start at running back on the Colts side of the ball. 
There will be some combination of Royce Freeman, Rex Burkhead, and Daria Gumbawale on the Houston side. You know, Brandon Cooks is not going to be on this team, I don't think, after this game. Maybe. Maybe the rookie uh, coming in would motivate Brandon Cooks to stay. But Brandon Cooks, Michael Pittman, a couple of disappointments this year. Sure. Michael Pittman, uh, over the last decade, is the lowest fantasy points of any player with 95-plus catches, which is just so sad. Well, the offense is disgusting. The quarterback play has been nasty. Yeah, but the I'm, quarterback but I'm play has been like, nasty, and 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 Matt Ryan was so far and away the best quarterback, and he was terrible. But I said, like, if you said, Don't yes, we <laughs> mm -hmm. if I said, like, there was a lot, I was so hyped for Michael Pittman this oh. year. A lot of people were excited for what. What he could do taking a step forward this year. You're the mayor, not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is your city, bro. Hey, yeah. you built it. I still reside as I still believe in the player. But if I said, hey, Jay. Property values are down. Through, oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're just, look, there's a lot of problems in the city right now. <laughs> we're trying to clean it up. But through week 17, I said, Jay. Yeah. Michael Pittman has 136 targets and 96 receptions. Oh, baby. Yeah. Wide receiver one guarantee. We, we would be so thrilled with that amount of volume. Minimum. Six touchdowns, probably over a thousand yards already. Yeah, but no, no, it's no, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Jelani Woods, big play last week. Uh, he he certainly has a future. I'm not sure he has a present this week, but you could take a you could take a shot if you wanted to. And um, yeah, well said. And to, <laughs> to speak to Zach Moss, well, Mike will talk about him later, discussingly. But um, <laughs> the opportunities are there. He's getting the ball a ton. The matchup is also there. I believe he has a floor that is, you know, like we started Hassan Haskins last week and we're mm -hmm. thrilled to have seven and a half fantasy points. Yeah. I, if you're thrilled to have seven and a half fantasy points, I do think that's like a minimum. He's the guy for you. Yeah, Zach Moss is going to have seven and a half fantasy points. I don't know that he gets to 10. I thought you were going to say, I don't know if he gets to eight. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> that, I think, yeah, it's either a seven and a half. Or you just slap a touchdown in there and so you're about 13 and a half. No, that's okay, so true. seven and a half. God, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, all of the uh, Week 18 rankings starts at tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Starts of the week. No finer time for starts of the week than Week 18, and no better time for me to go to the Aaron Rodgers oh, well. Man, I love this because you have, <laughs> you have just absolutely besmirched him correctly. Thank you. All season long so when i saw this in there I yeah was it's like, perfect what andy's it's going perfect Rogers. it's he, perfect week 18 he was almost a qb1 with last week's juicy matchup almost uh, almost is as close as he's gotten and it's perfect week 18 is the week for him to come out and give you the week you wanted all year long when nobody could play him uh gets to play detroit last six home games against detroit average 253 and 2.7 Detroit's defense is disgusting. At quarterback, I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence. Last week, they did not need him against the Houston Texans as they wiped the floor uh, with their running game. Um, th this <laughs> week against Tennessee in a must-win game, the Titans are allowing the most passing yards per game. They're 28th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks. And, oh, last time these two teams played, Trevor Lawrence was the quarterback one. He had 368 passing yards and four total touchdowns. I want pieces of the passing game in this game. Now, I want it to be very clear. My week 18 starts of the week are for those. you can, Maybe you're looking at situations where your players are on teams that are going to rest. They're going to be inactive. I want to be very, very clear. Very, very clear about that because... My quarterback start of the week, if you are desperate, I think that you can play Andy Dalton against the Carolina Panthers. You're going to need some sort of metallic underpants on. You've but, done – this is not your – I want you to know this. This is yes. a self-inventory time. This is not the first time Andy Dalton's name has come out of your mouth. That is segment. true. That is true, and it did not work last I time. Think, I think you're into him. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I'm into him this week. Uh, the Carolina Panthers, the past two weeks – 30th and 30th against quarterbacks and schedule adjusted. The Carolina Panthers are 25th on the season. Andy Dalton, uh, like he's been a top eight quarterback twice. That is two times more 
Then Andy's start of the week, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Andy Dalton Touché. can get it done this week against the Carolina Panthers. Also, did you hear that, Aaron? <laughs> 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 That's a good point, Mike. Uh, are we we're turning to running backs? Yep. Uh, another Aaron. I'm I'm looking for another Aaron. It's Aaron Jones against Detroit. It's all on the line. Last year he blew up for three touchdowns against the Lions, and Lambeau was the number one quarterback on the week. And uh, Detroit's rush defense, which had been just shut down, has been gouged recently. Delta Foreman, Chuba Hubbard, Justin Fields in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know Aaron Jones. He's an all-or-nothing guy, but they are, they're they're fighting for their playoff lives. They have been so impressive uh, through four quarters, really, lately. You know, they, there was no comeback for Minnesota last week. They just got shellacked by the Packers. And, and it's, you know, I want the Lions to make the playoffs because I want to see something new happen. I'm excited for that roster. But if you ask me who's going to win the game, it's Green Bay. Yeah, I know. That's how that's how I think everybody feels. Everyone, you know, unless you've got a vested interest in those two teams, everyone wants the Lions to win. <clears throat> and everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> probably not going to happen. Um, but go Lions. My running back start of the week is Jarek McKinnon going to Las Vegas to play the Raiders. He is on fire five straight games with a receiving touchdown. He's the running back two since week 13. He's just been absolutely unstoppable. And the Raiders ranked 27th at schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back. Most importantly, they've allowed the most running back receiving yards in the NFL. That is what Jarek McKinnon do. Are you making a, a six straight week guarantee? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Six straight week guarantee. This, this is what Clyde Edwards was supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. It's so frustrating. He was not ever fast enough i'm just that's just what he was supposed to be this is what the kansas city chiefs wanted him to be that's fair that's why they drafted him in the first as, round as we heard straight from the man's mouth your boy strong yes Jerry mckinnon yes he is good uh, for him by the way a lot of recovery yeah, in his yeah, yeah. career absolutely all right nasty running back start of the week it is zach moss <laughs> it is the best possible matchup for a running back against the houston texans they rank dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points by a mile, the Texans are allowing opponents the highest percentage of 10-plus yard gains over the last decade. Jeff's, like, you want to talk about at, like motivation of should the Colts win, should they lose? Jeff Saturday, a lot of things have been said by me about Jeff Saturday. <laughs> he is going to want to win that game. He is not going to look at the long-term draft pick for the Colts. He's going to want another win on his resume as he tries to convince the Colts that he should be the permanent coach next year. So I think that Zach Moss is going to get the ball a lot, and he will succeed. And uh, my wide receiver, it's Garrett Wilson against Miami. In four Mike White games, averaging 10-plus targets. Last week was a huge disappointment, but uh, they put up 40 against Miami earlier in the year. He's in a tight race for the Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think you feed Garrett Wilson this week if you're the Jets. Get him moving in a positive way towards 2023. Yeah, and I am going with another Packers. This is three of them here, but it really correlates oh, with Andy's man. Aaron Rodgers because Detroit's rush, rush defense has been great other than the super cold weather game um, against Carolina, so maybe that will uh, be a factor here. But uh, Christian Watson has been great. He practiced on Wednesday. He should be back to a full allotment of snaps. If he was on my roster, I would absolutely be starting him since week 10. He's targeted on 25.7% of his routes. That's 10th among wide receivers. That's better than Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen, or A.J. Brown. And the Lions, they're allowing the highest rate of 15-plus passing yards in the NFL. This matchup seems like a good one for Watson to get a touchdown. My wide receiver start of the week, I'm going with a stack for Mr. Andy Dalton. If he's going to succeed, someone on that team on the wide receiver core will succeed. Why not check out Rashid Shahid? Since week 12, he is averaging almost 70 yards a game. Mike Evans, there was a reason that Mike Evans was the start of the week last week because the Carolina Panthers are just bad against the pass. Rashid Shahid averaging over 18 yards per reception since week 10. He's averaging the same yards per route run as Tyreek Hill. And again, Carolina ranks 27th in pass DVOA. According to Football Outsiders, they can be beat deep, and that is Rashid Shahid's specialty. Oh, <laughs> going with Darren Waller in the final week of the season against Kansas City, the highest over under of, or I'm sorry, the highest total of the week. Seen seven plus targets in each of his last five games against the Chiefs. Looked really good last week, 
looked like the same Darren Waller. Like he took a lot of time to come back, but he looked like his old self had that rapport with Jarrett Stidham. You know, my future dynasty superstar. Of course. And um, superstar. I they did say superstar. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Accurately you did. Yeah, I mean a stupid star. Yeah. On my yeah. team. Superstar. Uh over the last month, Kansas City's twenty ninth in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the tight ends. Yeah, I, I really like that. I, I want pieces in that matchup. I'm gonna go with Tyler Higby at Seattle. He's been boomer bust lately. Nasty. <laughs> but we know this Seattle ranks dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight ends. It's a matchup you want to target. I want a tight end that can command targets, and since Baker Mayfield became the quarterback, he leads the team with a 23% target share. He can also earn an additional $125,000 Ooh, like that. if he surpasses 600 receiving yards, which he should do in this game. And you want some targets? Tyler Conklin. Conk, conk, baby. Conk, conk. The Dolphins have become the second best tight end matchup, and Conk gets targets when Mike White is the quarterback. We're talking 25 targets over the last month. For uh, for Tyler Conklin, when they were from Zach Wilson, they weren't so great. But from when they're from Mike White, six for eighty last week, he gets it done. He is kind of that number two option right now for the Jets. It's time the epic conclusion. <gasps> oh, are you ready? Prepare, yes. prepare your ears or cover them. Oh, I'm not hearts. sure which one, but it's time. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, mm -hmm. we referenced Sean ba Bradley and we rode off in <laughs> victory, me, Andy, and Mike together. <clears throat> Three buddies valiantly forged together, but stories can change just like the weather. Three's a company, I heard someone once said, but this trio became a duo once somebody bled. For Andy was stabbed by the blade of Mike. Treason and tragedy were felt alike, but Mike is not the hero of this diddy do. He fell victim of a fatal Chipotle poo. So long, Tucker, Gould and Butker, too. Good riddance, McPherson, and Young Way Koo. For I'm the boom boom, the true marvel of the show. Kickers are hot farts, and you should let those bad boys go. So you're the boom boom I'm kicker. I'm the boom boom kicker this week. <laughs> that was... Put me in your lineup. That was, that was outstanding. That was sensational. That was... It really brought it all home. Mm -hmm. a, we'd tell a story, and I think uh, I think I mean, we might need to change up the the style next year. So stay tuned. Okay, like, I'm I'm into that. You can you can uh, catch up. By the way, shout out to whoever built boomboomkicker dot com because you have the whole story line on boomboomkicker dot com. I look. I don't know what's the worst situation: falling victim to Mike's treacherous uh, knife. Or the way that Mike went oh, down. Oh, Mike got it worse, for sure. I mean, being stabbed in the I, back, look, pretty bad, but... I want to go how I live, fellas. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's how... Yeah, okay. Hey, on the toilet. Speaking of week 18. Well, that is, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. I will say this tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, I will not be shamed. So, mm. so that will take place tomorrow. One of these two gentlemen near me. I will not be shamed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I could care less to be shamed because I am the League of Records. I champion. would be careful what you say. Oh, no. Oh, I, I know. This, you guys are going to give it to me so hardcore tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've, you've done well avoiding hey, it for most it. of the year. So yeah. uh, that is on tomorrow's episode. The rest of the matchups. Don't miss it. Oh boy! <laughs> oh no! You need to you need to let me know what's going on in here. So. Now I'm afraid. I feel like I'm missing something. So, all right, thank you for joining us. YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to tune in, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.